Now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the missing angle. So we've just done calculating the missing side. Now we're going to calculate the missing angle. All right. Now, if we're calculating the missing angle, we're going to work exactly the same way as we have been working. All right. So we start by determining what do we have, what do we need, and then that way we determine which trig ratio we're going to use. Once we've determined which trig ratio we're going to use, we're able to then calculate the angle. There is one extra step where we're not going to divide by the trig ratio. We're not going to divide by sine, cos, or tan, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. All right. So if we look at this triangle, it starts very similarly to what we have been doing. So I look and over here I'm given angle R, but angle R is now unknown. Angle R is theta and PQ we're given and PR we're given. So now based on that angle, I'm going to identify that the 3.5 is the hypotenuse because it's the side opposite the right angle. But the other piece of information I'm given is PQ and that is opposite the angle. So now when I look at some old hens, cackle and howl till old age, and I'm going to identify which of these ratios I'm going to use, I've got the opposite and the hypotenuse, which means that I'm going to use sine. And I'm going to start by writing out my formula. So sine of the angle, so the angle in this case is R, so sine of angle R is equal to the opposite, which is PQ, over the hypotenuse, which is PR. So the sine of, now instead of R having a, a numerical value, I'm going to put theta. So sine theta is equal to PQ, which is 2.9 over PR, which is 3.5. Now, you would be able to look at this, and if this were a normal equation and you wanted to isolate that theta, you'd want to divide by the sine. Now, if you divide it by the sine, your calculator will already tell you that you've made a mistake. All right, so we can't divide by the sign. We have to second function that sign. We have to shift sign. So on your calculator, you're going to push your shift button and then sign. And you're going to see that it looks a little bit different. So now we're going to second function sign. So it comes up on your calculator as sine negative one. So now that means therefore that theta will be equal to, so what you do on your calculator is you push shift, sine, type in your fraction of 2.9 over 3.5, and you're going to get an answer. And that answer that we get is 55.95 degrees, because it's an angle. However, degrees, angles, we want to round generally to one decimal place. So in order to round this to one decimal place, it's actually going to round to a whole number. So theta is therefore equivalent to 56 degrees. All right, pause the video quickly and you can attempt this your turn question. All right, now that you've attempted the your turn question, here is the answer. All right, next example. We have triangle EGF and we want to calculate the alpha. So now we look, what do we have? What do we need? So we have this angle F, we have this alpha. We have this length of 36.5. We have this length of 11.9. So now I just want to determine what those lengths are in relation to the alpha. So the alpha, if I look, I'm not given any information about the hypotenuse because it's blank. So that means that I have line GF and GF is adjacent next to the alpha. And I'm also given the EG, which is the side opposite. So I have some old hens cackle and howl till old age. So based on this, I'm just going to determine which of the ratios I'm going to use. So I'm given the adjacent, so that could be cos or tan, and I'm also given the opposite. So that means that it's tan. So now I'm going to use my tan formula. So tan of the angle, the angle that I'm given or referencing from is angle F. So tan of angle F is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So the opposite 
is side EG over the adjacent, which is side GF. So now I have tan of angle F, but angle F is unknown, so I have tan of alpha equal to EG, which is 11.9 over GF, which is 36.5. Now I want to solve for the alpha, so that means that I can't divide both sides by tan. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shift tan, arc tan, second function tan, so I have tan negative 1, so I type that into my calculator, shift tan, so therefore alpha is equal to shift tan 11.9 over 36.5 to one decimal place, and I get an answer of 18.1 alpha is an angle degrees. All right, pause the video and have a go at this your turn question. All right, once you're done with the your turn question, here's the answer. All right, so if I look at this last example, I have triangle EGF, and I need to determine what do I have, what do I need. So I'm given the theta, I'm given this 9 centimeters, and I'm given this 12 centimeters. So in relation to that theta, I have the 9 centimeters, which is the adjacent side, and I have the 12 centimeters, which is the hypotenuse. It's the hypotenuse because it's the side opposite the right angle. So now I have some old hens cackle and how till old age. All right, so if I look at this now, I'm going to determine which of these ratios I'm going to use. So I have the adjacent, so that could be cos or tan, and I have the hypotenuse. So that means that I'm going to be working in this question with cos. And identifying the trig ratio is the first step to getting the question correct. So we're going to write out our formula. So the cos of the angle that I'm referencing from, so in this case it's cos of angle F, is equal to adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the adjacent is GF over the hypotenuse, which is EF. So that means that cos of angle F, that's theta, is equal to GF, and GF is 9, over EF and EF is 12. But I don't want cos theta, I want the theta by itself. I'm not going to divide by cos, I am going to shift cos, second function cos. So on my calculator, shift cos 9 over 12, and therefore theta to one decimal place is equal to 41.4 degrees because it's an angle. Please pause the video and have a turn at the your turn question. All right, now that you've done the attempt, here is the answer. I do hope that you've enjoyed this video. I do hope that it's helped. Stay tuned for more videos on trigonometry. Remember, the more you do, the better you'll be.